Teachers at the University of the Western Cape have found that uh, methamphetamines, also known as TUC, could have harmful male uh, or rather harmful effects to male fertility. It has also been discovered that TUC damages vital testicular cells uh, responsible for sperm production. Joining us now uh, is uh, Professor David Fisher, professor at the University of the Western Cape's Medical Bioscience Department. Prof, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for uh, your time. Quite a study this. How long have you been on this particular study uh, and uh, wh what are some of the parameters that you have had to look at? So let me tell you, first of all, that we first published a study in 2015, and we looked at the effect of, of methamphetamine, which is TIC, on uh, the blood-brain barrier. And how did it affect the blood-brain barrier? And we saw that although uh, methamphetamine did not kill off the cells of the blood-brain barrier, it actually stopped them dividing. And that sent up sent a message to us that we need to look at it further. And we looked, there's another barrier that's very important. Of course, the blood-brain barrier is a very important barrier. It keeps us safe, keeps all the toxins in the blood and not going into the brain. But there's another barrier that's very important. And that, that barrier is your blood testis barrier. That barrier keeps your sperm safe from toxins and uh, harmful effects that's, that you can get from your from the blood. And what we found is, is this very significant thing that when we look at the, the, the most important component of these of the germinal epithelium, the, the epithelium that actually is producing sperm, we found that uh, the, these cells, the satoidy cells, stopped dividing as well. And uh, we looked at two parts. And this is a very important part of our study. We looked at, at, at an acute study. And we looked at a chronic study. And I want to tell you why we did that. The acute study is a short study where we imposed methamphetamine on these cells over a period of 24 hours. And that was to simulate the recre recreational user, the person that is a party goer that takes, takes a bit of meth here and there and just to, to get a high. And we wanted to see, does that affect the testers? And to our surprise, we saw that two days later, we had a significant decrease in the amount of satoidy cell division taking place. And so that would definitely affect the testers and would affect sperm production. You know that anything affecting sperm production would affect sperm cell number. Now, sperm cell number is effectively linked to male fertility. If you have a drop in your sperm number, the number of sperm that you have in your ejaculate, yeah. then obviously that would lead to to, uh, to low fertility. Yeah. And you're saying we this, then that, this happens immediately, I mean, within a space of 24 hours, you do not need prolonged use to begin to see this. No, this is a person that uses incidentally. It's not a, It's not an addict. We're not talking about an addict when you talk about an acute study. We're talking about a party goer, has a bit of meth, and then, and then takes it forward from there. But what we said two days later, we see that those satoidy cells are, are very affected. Not immediately. So so we after they've been exposed for 24 hours, 48 hours, we don't see any effects. But at 72 hours, we see the satoidy cells have definitely decreased in their cell division. Now, this is critical. This is critical from, from a point of view of, of, uh, of the development of your sperm, the nursing of the sperm, as well as the maturing of sperm. If you don't have your satoidy cells up and running and functional, then it affects sperm production. And sperm production is, is absolutely critical for sperm number. Right. If you have a drop in your sperm number, of course, you're going to become sterile and become infertile as, as a male. Yeah, and, and, and what are now, the durations? Uh, let's stick with that before we get to the more severe. What, what are the, the, the durations for recuperation then? So now they are, of course, with the moment you, uh, when we do a 24-hour uh, exposure, we removed all meth afterwards. So we want to also see how quickly do these cells recover. So the cells do recover, and that is what, what is actually a, a good thing to know. The cells do recover after short-term acute exposure. So by 96 hours, they have returned to control conditions. In other words, the cells have recovered their ability to divide. But now, what is the big problem with this? If we look at, in, at the amount of people that are incidental users, recreational users, the amount of them of these uh, persons that transition into addicts, is very high, is between 75 and 80%. And we also know that the addiction 
of this is really uh, uh, critical amongst amongst our, our our population in the Western Cape, right. especially. Now, once you transitioned into a chronic user, into an addict user, then things change dramatically. It becomes worse. And so we looked at a chronic study where we expose our, our Sertoli cells on a daily basis to methamphetamine. Then your cells did not recover. They remain uh, subdued. They remain suppressed. They, they cannot uh, recover from, from this process. And within six months, you become totally infertile. Now, if uh, another very important thing, we, we saw this before. When we looked at, at addicts that have died and we looked at the morphology of the testes and the, and the anatomy of the testes, we then looked at, at the size of the test. And the first thing that we, we came across is the te their testes were very small. And because, and then we wanted to say, why on earth is, are, are, are the testes of, of methamphetamine addicts small? And we now know it's because there's a, the, the cell division for Satoli cells have been abruptly stopped in these. In these uh, yeah. They also are without, a, 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 you know, they almost all of them within six months become infertile. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we have this, this dual problem with uh, in terms of fertility. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if we want to get <laughs> methamphetamine addicts to be fertile, but at least we know that if you dabble in the, in the arena, arena of, of, of a methamphetamine yeah. use, tick use, you have had a very good chance of becoming infertile. You also took then a comparative study, if you like, uh, uh, between the, the same impact when you use alcohol and, and cannabis. What, what are the effects on male fertility then? Yeah, so, so uh, and now you, you mentioned a very important thing, cannabis. Uh, and, and, and one of the, my main problems when, uh, in, in studying the effects of cannabis on, on the blood-brain barrier and on the blood testis barrier, we've got two studies running in parallel at the moment. And what we need to understand is that everybody has got cannabinoid systems in them, both males and females. And these systems play a very important role. They're called your endogenous cannabinoid system. So there's not a person, not you, not I, that do not have cannabinoid systems within us and that we're not producing cannabinoids as we speak now. So that's the first thing I want to get out of the way. Secondly, we don't know what the elevation of these additional exogenous uh, cannabinoids are going to cause. And, but we know, we know how to fix our TC, uh, TCH, uh, fix your, your, um, your, your psychosis, uh, your psychology, and, and we know how CBD uh, uh, fix certain systems in terms of inflammation, uh, et cetera. So we are studying that. We hope to publish on these two systems very shortly. But uh, that's just a small thing that I want to, yeah. want to say is that it's very, I think, um, uh, irresponsible. To, to allow a, a people to start using cannabis without actually doing the studying of how to fix the physiology of human beings beforehand. Yeah. How do you That's overcome, the point I want to say. How do you then overcome uh, tech addiction? I mean, ultimately, what does it come down to? It's very difficult. So the, the treatment uh, can be clinical. And, and of course, uh, you have to be really be aware of the fact, number one, you need to understand you have a problem. And anybody that's addicted knows they have a problem. They need to recognize that and they need to know they need help. You cannot, 99% of people that aren't, uh, cannot do it on their own. Uh, that's, that's critical. And we also see the biggest relapse of all drug systems resides in, in methamphetamine addicts. So although they can come off under, under stressful conditions, they tend to uh, go back and, and try to cook in. Are there studies being done? I mean, well, you don't want to promote uh, such behavior in any case, but are we exploring possible treatments to reverse and protect against this damage? So we're not doing that. We, we hope that uh, we'll be able to look at different systems which we can actually block the effects of, of uh, methamphetamine. We're doing that with the alcohol study, for instance. Alcohol uh, uh, brings about its effects through causing excess ROS, which is reactive oxygen species. We want to understand that if we ask people to drink, for instance, a tea like rooibos tea, 
Would it actually be able to reverse the effects of, of alcohol on, on, on vital systems like the brain and, and as well as the testes? So we also want to understand how does uh, these antioxidants that are in large supply within uh, teas like rooibos tea, if people are rather encouraged to drink that, would they be able to recover quicker? And would it be able to actually prevent the, 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 the nasty effects of, of uh, ROS or oxidative stress on both the brain as well as uh, your um, testicular systems. Yeah, Prof, thanks so much for coming on this afternoon and sounding the alarm on this. So one more reason why you should get off tick, and uh, that is it affects your fertility. That's uh, Professor David Fisher there at the University of the Western Cape's uh, Medical Bioscience Department.